Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today on Demos with Angular, I'm going to walk you through the process of updating to v6 in order to show you all the amazing new things that came out as part of the 6.0 release of both Angular, the Angular CLI, and Material. We'll go through features like ng update and ng add, and then we'll take a look at some of the starter components from Angular Material, and even take a look at some things like Angular Elements. Let's get started. So to kick things off, I've used version 1.7 of the Angular CLI to create a new project uh, that we're going to that we called uh, v6 welcome. So if we just take a look here, we're going to see v6 welcome, and I should be able to run ng serve, and this should spin up a Angular 5 application. So one of the the first new things that we want to take a look at as part of the 6.0 release of Angular is really how the Angular team is focused on making the update process easier. So if we look at localhost 4200, we're going to see a simple v5 application. Uh, we can again verify all this with ng version, and we'll see Angular 5.2, CLI 1.7. And so we're going to go through a couple quick steps to update to the latest version. So we're going to run npm install at angular slash CLI. That will just update our local CLI to the 6.0 release. I should also automatically install it to at latest. Uh, you, if you're doing this at home, you should probably install the Angular CLI globally uh, as well. Let's just be super clear here and say npm install at angular slash CLI at latest. All right, now it's telling us we need to update our CLI package. So let's go ahead and run that command, ng update at angular slash CLI. Uh, so what this will do is it will run all of the transforms um, via the schematics under the hood to update our project. So we've moved our angular CLI.json file to angular.json, uh, and it's made some updates to our package.json, our tslint, our tsconfig, uh, some of those kind of minor things that keep you up to date in terms of the dependency chain. So as soon as this update is done, we're going to go ahead and test our application again. If we look at ng version, we're going to see that we're still on Angular 5, uh, but now we're on 6.0 of uh, the CLI. So if we do ng serve, we'll just verify our app works again real quick. Uh, you'll also notice that this is using the Webpack 4 under the hood, so you're going to see some new symbols like uh, Webpack dev mode here. Perfect. All right, so now I'm ready to update Angular, so I'm going to run ng update at angular slash core which should take the version of Angular, TypeScript, RxJS, uh, and zones all the way up to the correct version for the system. So you can see we're installing 6.1.0 of RxJS, 6.0.1 of uh, some of the core packages, uh, as well as we have uh, TypeScript at 2.7. So that was really easy. Let's give that a test here. And again, if this is working, we should see that the page reloads successfully. All right. We are now on Angular 6. That was really easy. Let's just run ng version and verify 6.0.1. Uh, and so that's kind of the magic of ng update is that you can ng update any of your packages uh, and it will run the npm commands necessary. It'll update peer dependencies uh, and it will, if available, run any schematics as part of that update process. Uh, so the next thing I want to show off is an ng add command. So what you do is you run ng add and then you give it the name of a package. So I'll add at angular slash material here. Uh, and what this will do is this will go ahead and add a your slash material as a dependency to my project. Um, but then it will also configure my project so it'll add the theme to my package JSON. Uh, it will do a couple other things. So if we take a look here at our project, make sure this is big enough. And if we look in our package JSON, we'll now see that we have at your slash material and the CDK as needed to run Angular. Uh, and then if we go in source, uh, excuse me, if we go into the angular.json file, uh, we'll see that the styles have been added, so now we have our indigo pink theme. Uh, and then we'll also in our angular.json file see a couple other things. We'll see that uh, it's actually added some of the schematics so that you can uh, build things out a little bit easier. So we'll just do that later. So now that we've got these extra schematics installed, what I can do is I can actually use some of the Angular Material starter schematics. And so I'll generate one by doing ng generate at angular slash material, material nav. Oh, and I've got to give it a name equals my nav. So this will generate a component just like normal, um, but this is going to be a starter component. And so if we look at the files in our app folder, we're going to see my nav. You're going to see HTML, TypeScript, all the normal things you expect to see with any component. Uh, and this is automatically set up a, a simple component with all of the navigation things that you might expect from an Angular application. And so 
uh, if we go into our app component and actually try and uh, use this, we'll just delete all this and say my nav. And if we refresh our application, we should, as soon as we're serving, let's just do that in a new tab here. Uh, as soon as this application is up, we should see that instead of our default application, we will see a material nav uh, component. And there we go. Uh, and you can see it's actually already responsive. So if you shrink this window, it's going to collapse. You can open it, shrink it, all those sorts of kind of nice things that you'd expect from material. Uh, we can also see this with a couple other components. So we'll just scaffold them out as well. So next one we're going to do is material dashboard. Dash dash name equals my dev. Excuse me, that should have been my dash, but oh well, it doesn't matter. It's just a name. Uh, and material table, dash dash name equals my table. Uh, and we'll just take a look at each of these one by one. So first we'll look at my dev, which is uh, my dashboard, very poorly named here. And we see a kind of live dashboard. There's a bunch of cards. They've got a flexible layout. Uh, and you can see that each of the cards has actions. So this is actually something we, we see very, very common uh, in terms of building out a dashboard for an application. Uh, and then we'll just take a look at the last one, which is going to be my table. And it's already there. And so not only do you get this nice table, you get pagination, you get forward and next buttons, you get things like sorting all the kind of features that you'd expect out of table. And one of my favorite parts about the my table uh, the, uh, starter component that gets scaffolded out uh, is that you can see not only how to build it from a ng container, the mat head, mat cell, uh, how to bind to the paginator, all those sorts of things, but you also have a my table data source. And so you can actually see how to build your own data source uh, within the Angular application. So uh, that is a really, really cool part uh, that is very exciting. So let's go ahead and clear this up. So next up, we're going to go ahead and add another feature to our Angular application, and that is Angular Elements. And so Angular Elements is a really cool project that takes Angular components and bootstraps them via the browser native functionality, uh, or what's called custom elements. So I'm going to go ahead and run ng add at angular slash elements and add this into my project. And so that's going to both install the dependency as well as register this additional polyfill that we're going to need, document register element.js. So what we can do now is I'm going to generate a component that we're going to want to register. So I'm going to say ng generate component my element. And so we'll get out a nice my element class. Uh, and then we're going to do a few different things. So if we take a look in our app module, we still need the declaration because that's how we know how to compile this element from the Angular context. Uh, but we're also going to need to add this to our entry components. Uh, now entry components basically tells Angular, hey, we need to compile uh, this component even if you don't find it in a template. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and also create a custom schemas. Uh, and in that custom schema, we're going to call it custom elements schema. And so what that allows us to do is turn off the validation that says, hey, uh, this is not a valid element. Uh, because it's not an Angular, um, an Angular component. And so this will just allow any custom element that we have in our application. So that should be good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and modify our my element. Let's make sure that exists here. Uh, and we're going to actually remove the selector. So app my element, we're not actually going to even use that. We're going to be doing this a little bit more manually. And if you look at the component itself, it's going to say my element works. Uh, so we'll, now let's go ahead and bootstrap this or register this via custom elements and via the browser mechanic uh, mechanisms here. So I'm going to add an ng on init method to our app component. And I'm also going to add a constructor. I'm using the constructor because I want to get a hold of the injector. That should be good. And now in our ng on init, so this is going to run once for our application because we only uh, register our app component once. Uh, I'm going to use a new method called create custom element. So I'm going to say let my element equals create custom element. We're going to need to import that from Angular Elements, and I'm going to pass it two things. I'm going to hand it the element, so my element component, and I'm going to pass it a handle to the injector. So now we have a element constructor, and then we can actually use the browser native functionality 
to register that component. So uh, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use the uh, custom elements registry. So this is just browser uh, mechanism here, and I'm going to call the define method. I'm going to pass it my element. Excuse me, I'm going to pass it a uh, selector. So my element, and then I'm going to give it the my element variable. So our application should continue working. Let's actually blow away our text here so we have nothing and just make sure that this works. Uh, it would help if we were ng serving. I don't see any errors, so I think everything is great. Uh, and then what we can do is we should be able to use my element. And so we're not going to get the nice completion because this is not an Angular component that our application knows about. Uh, but we're going to see my element works. Uh, and the magic here, if we look in the actual application and we edit this as HTML, we don't need Angular to bootstrap these additional elements. I can even go outside of the app root context and create a my element component just by hand in the dev tools and we should see another my element show up and so this is the magic of using the browser machinery instead of relying on angular uh, but as you can tell because it has the injector it actually has access to all of the normal things we're used to uh, such as dependency injection uh, such as access to services and to other parts of our application so this is really cool and we have our own custom element and everything's working perfectly all right, so Angular Elements is really cool and exciting. Let's dig into the next new feature, which is library support in the CLI. So I'm going to get started with ng-generate library, and I'm going to give it a name like my shared lib. When I do this, it's going to build out all of the testing, all the configuration files needed. And then what I should be able to do is just take a quick look and verify in the source file here, source tree. I'll just close all the open files. Um, we'll take a look in projects. So this is the new project structure where all of the additional libs and projects are going to go in my shared lib. And then I can just see that it's got its own tslint, its own tsconfig, all these sorts of nice things. Uh, and one of the things that might have added here, if we look at our tsconfig.json, uh, is paths for my shared lib. I'm going to make sure that there is a base URL for the compilation. So because there is, we should be good to go. So I'm going to run ng build dash dash project equals my shared lib and then inside of my dist folder I'm going to get out a my shared lib version that has the compiled uh, angular library so let's look into dist my shared lib and here is exactly what we could be pushing to npm it's got its own package JSON. it's got all the different file formats that you need to be shipping a library to production that works for uh, a number of different use cases and it follows all of the best practices of the angular package format and so uh, this is pretty easy and we are basically done so the final thing i want to show today is really all about uh, tree shakeable providers and so there's a new way of supplying a provider within an application. So if we go back to our root here, clear this up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say ng generate service, and maybe I'll call it my data service. So what we're noticing here is instead of creating a service and then adding it to our manifest, it's just creating the service. And this is a little bit different than what you might be used to. And so if we look back into our main application project here, I'm going to see my data service. And if we look at the TypeScript file, we're going to see something new. Uh, instead of just seeing at injectable at the top, we're going to see injectable provided in root. And so what this does is instead of going into my module and providing this service, the service is going to provide itself and it's going to attach it to the injector itself. And the benefit here is that if no one ever uses this service, it's going to get tree shaken away. But if someone does use the service, uh, then it will be registering itself in the injector and it will be available uh, as part of the root of our application, meaning everything's going to work perfectly. And so that is the high-level summary of v6, showing off a couple of the cool features of the CLI and Angular elements. Uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, give this uh, video a try on your own projects. Let us know what you think. Uh, and looking forward to see what else we can do with Angular in the future. Thanks so much.